large language models are really going crazy. The craze is so high that the number of large language models coming out, be it closed source or open source, is really growing every single day. The capabilities that these models have is also evolving very quickly and they are becoming much better day to day at what they do. Be it, you know, summarization, chat, translation, generating code, writing fiction, and in multimodal languages, even being a little creative about things. So these models are essentially evolving at a very, very fast rate. And you must be using something like ChatGPT or Claude or, you know, Bing, Microsoft Copilot and stuff like that. Now, one common challenge which I stumbled upon is I don't really pay for any of them, but want to use the best of them. That's me. Probably that's you too. And then the architect in me decided that I want to deploy these models. So I spent about four to five days in trying to figure out how can I deploy these models on my local laptop. Now it does work. You could happily do it with a lot of Python code and a little bit of optimizing. And uh, then you kind of run them in a notebook kind of interface, which wasn't good. Then I thought of finding frameworks and libraries or, you know, around which I stumbled upon different frameworks like Langchain, Llama Index, Langflow and all of that. And essentially what I realized is I was getting into a tool jungle. Basically, I was making my laptop a, a you know, a very complex environment setup where every time I wanted to work with an LLM, I needed to kind of, you know, get into it, code, put in my question, type it out, etc. And then eventually what I wanted is, you know, can I use the output of those models in my code? Uh, you know, basically just use like an open API, open AI token. So I, I, I kind of hit a roadblock, but then I stumbled upon a very interesting tool. I want to talk about that a little bit. And the core conversation that we are going to have today is how do we deploy a model locally? Now, these are a little smart way or kind of a cheat codes. Stick out till the end. I'm going to talk about an extra tool. So let's get started. All right. So what you should see on my screen is a tool called LM Studio. And as the name says, it should be Language Model Studio or that's what I'm guessing. It's available for Mac, Windows, and Linux. And it can run Llama model, Falcon models, MPT, Starcode, or tons of different kinds of models from Hugging Face. Largely centered around Hugging Face. So if you have a model which is non-Hugging Face, I probably don't know how that will work out. And uh, do they simple question, do they collect any data? No. Can you use at work? Most likely, no. You should probably submit a work request and simple minimum hardware requirements. And this is what made me really happy. This is just an Apple Silicon Mac M1, M2, M3, anything that you have with Mac 13.6. No memory requirement or anything like that. But 16 GB of RAM is recommended, which I happily have on my MacBook Pro. All right, and NVIDIA AMD GPU support is what they talk, but they also have Apple Metal support. So I've, I've tried running some models on my MacBook and I'll also do the same on my Windows PC, which is a much beefed up environment. So let's move forward and go to the studio itself. All right, so so this is the studio and uh, that's essentially, there's this few tabs. So let's just do a quick check for update. You are on the latest version, so very easy to do. And you should always do this because uh, these tools really update themselves quite frequently and uh, there would be a lot of new parameters getting rolled out. The second is searching for the model and this is where it really shines. So when I wanted to, uh, you know, try out models in code, I did not have this kind of a list and it wasn't this easy to download and, you know, play with the models because each model essentially has a different kind of sometimes uh, way you interact, the token size, different parameters that you want to play with. And that complexity I was not open to dealing with. So, so you can try out tons of different stuff. There's a lot of models you can keep scrolling. Most of them are zero. I don't know why people put it here. But you have some of the top ones like Mistral and all. And what it happens is let's so let's just search for Mistral, which is anyway uh, the first one. But it will go and search out and uh, give you some results. So I have downloaded Mistral 7B Instruct 1. This is Q2 quantized. I'll talk about quantization in a different video. It's a really cool technique, compresses the models and 
even compressed and use is not recommended it's 3 gb in size so that's a huge model and if you if you really go by the best models i think they are super super huge yeah so if you see q8 quantization this is like 7 and 8 gb and then there are bigger models in this space as well uh, which i think i saw some time back all right <clears throat> what it also does is it shows you the compatibility score it's more of a guess i don't know why it says it's a guess and it just base it's based on heuristics probably that so it just calls out that this should work you can click on model card and it will take you to hugging face and you'll be able to see the entirety of uh, the model details what it has what parameters it's used you know the list of clients and libraries that are known to support it repositories uh, tons of information every every detail that you want to understand for the model all right and uh, then so all you need to do is just you know really click here and download what i'm gonna do is i'll i'll download one model live which is q3 or yeah maybe 3.82 gb and let it you know download in the background while i show other capabilities and then i'll come back and try to show you how easy it is to switch between two models now it's it's important to understand that this is a tool which is evolving and uh, so things could change over a period of time next point is you know what model you're working with so you can use this as a chat interface and when you use it as a chat interface what happens is you know you have the model here you just go on drop down and you'll get a model to select right now there's only one uh, there's one model being downloaded and as you can see it's progressing really quickly we'll come back to this later and you can pretty much ask uh, questions to it uh, like hello how are you do you sing are you not sing or is it just sing uh yeah no so it doesn't have the ability to sing it's a language model and what you have here is you know there's few options that you can play with on the right hand side and i'll probably want to zoom in a bit here so you could select the prompt reprompt stuff you could do gpu acceleration which is support for apple metal as i was saying it's experimental you could change the context length here this supports up to 32,000 tokens you could technically set it to that and the moment you do some change here it will ask you to reload the model to apply configuration let's just do that and it will just reload the model and then during that period this part will be locked and then you have some more advanced configuration like you know output randomness number of tokens to generate sampling rates uh, temperature set uh, the batch size for the prompt evaluation tons of different stuff you have a crazy parameter which i would love to try on my windows machine because i have 32 gb here which is keeping entire model in ram which will make it super fast i'm guessing one idea which i'm having is i'll keep the model run run the next feature which i'm going to talk about which is about an api server and then it'll be a super fast api server locally streaming for my own use cases and i'll really love that with a little bit of tuning here and there so yeah these are the cpu threads and all uh, that you can set here you can change and play with it you also have a model inspector option here you have some context overflow policy blah 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 and let's just go about it can you generate python code to perform trading using machine learning generate a generate code to build trading signal and use ml based approach let's see what it does <clears throat> so I, I basically asked it to generate some sample code and probably decision tree is what most llms default to i have no idea why uh, i've tried asking the same question to multiple llms and they'll always give me something with related to decision tree but it's so far doing good um, actually and i'll just do stop generating and that, that so that's this part of it and then now we have completed so finished now what i'll have is another model to be able to play so uh, i can now select this model and it will load a different model so that it also shows the cpu and memory users up top so uh, you can see in this area that there's 1.90 g cpu and all of that i'll probably ask the same question to this guy as well sorry guy 
not really a guy, uh, more of a computer program. So yeah, it's now increasing and probably trying to do something. Yes. Again, see, oh, this time this guy gave a random forest. I think it hurt me. Uh, so very similar stuff that it's trying to do and largely the same. So let's keep this model loaded because this is slightly bigger and better model. Both the models, as you can see in the last tab, can be dumped down and you'll see the size and all the parameters and the stuff that you want to have there. The next thing which is really cool about this tool is that it has a local inference server, which really means is you can have an HTTP server and it will behave like an open AI API. So what you will do is instead of going to open AI's APIs and being charged for it, you can just plug it to use this and keep using it, keep using it. For example, in your content creation, in your transcriptions, all of that, you could just do this for free, right? So this is really, this just creates, reduces a lot of friction around building the API and serving it and managing the infrastructure and whatnot. And it's really easy for a local computer environment. And what I'm probably planning to do is run something of this sort on a local machine, which is powered by a Raspberry Pi or something. So all you need to do is just click on start server and it'll just take some time and play with it. You can do a curl, pretty simple. Let's do a simple curl. And let's see what we get side by side. So you see there's some stuff here. So it's starting to stream and it has given the all the entirety of the data. Hello, I'm an AI, blah, 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 blah. All right, so, so this is how it can work. You can work it in a quick curl request. You can have an AI assistant in Python, which will, you know, provide some well-reasoned answer to question. There's a sample code here. You have a vision project, uh, which can, which you can, you know, use to leverage a, a, uh, images from. All I'll do is I'll just run this simple stuff from PyCharm. Uh, and I hope the model is still the same. So yeah, what I've done is just copied the code from here. And uh, basically, if you see here, API key is not needed. Everything else is the same. It's just running from OpenAI. And I hope this works because I changed the model. Yeah, okay, got it. So you'll get the same response. It will introduce yourself or you could just play with this. Uh, what is the world made up of? It could give some crappy answer. It's made up of land, sky and sea and creatures that come from every tree and the answer has to be in rhyme. So it's pretty good at that. So yeah, this is, this is quite interesting uh, and very exciting. So, so the way this tool is essentially behaving is giving you the an LLM capability, which is running completely locally. So if you want to power some of your experiments or just play with different models and try to understand for your use case, what's the best model to, to kind of help in your development or your pet project or your, you know, be it enterprise project, this could, they really speed up the research cycle, which thereby allowing you to play with different models and validate them. All right. So yeah, just to kind of go back, what did we look at? We looked at a tool called LM Studio and essentially how do we use it? Now, some time back, or I think at the beginning of the video, I told about an, another tool which we can use. So I'll just give a quick introduction to it and call the video an end. So let's go towards it. So it's called Ulama dot AI and essentially it's a command line tool. So it works very similar to LM Studio, but not in a visual way. And you have GitHub for it. You can check it out. Uh, all you do is essentially just, you know, run something like Olama run Llama 2. I, I, I don't think it will be able to pull it off directly, but I have installed and done it. Okay, so it's it's trying to run it off. So it's this simple. It's even simpler than the previous one. So now it's gonna download uh, the entire model, and I'm most likely going to cancel it. Okay, cancel, 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 cancel. All right, cool. So essentially this Llama 2 is going to run locally within the terminal. You can do it in a dockerized version. 
there's a lot of different models supported which are very similar in nature to the one that we previously saw but this is another tool that you can play around with there's a couple of more options and parameters for you to play with in the options in the examples directory and you can do some modifications as well uh, make it multi-line input multi-modal input list models on your computer on your local machine you could <clears throat> play with the models, builds, etc, etc. You could also do the REST API for running and managing model. But this is with Olama. This is not a REST API like the one you have in the LM Studio. <clears throat> There's a lot of community integrations which I'm yet to explore. But I find this tool really powerful as well, given that it can integrate well in the terminal and you have it much easier access. All right, so that's it for the large language models. I think what's going to happen in this space is these models are continuing evolving like the dinosaurs did. And after a while, there will be saturation, but no extinction. Till then, enjoy the number of tools that are coming up. Bye-bye. Subscribe to my video if you have liked it. Cheers. Have a good day.